Welcome back. An important interview now as a 14-year-old Kira Bell started experiencing extreme discomfort with her body and identity and she became severely depressed. After discovering American trans activists on YouTube, Kara decided she needed to medically transition to make her feel better and she began using male pronouns. But as her home life deteriorated, her depression and anxiety worsened and she was referred to a GP. After insisting to an NHS psychologist that she wanted to be a boy, she was referred to the Gender Identity Development Service at London's Tavistock and Portman Clinic, where Kara says she repeated the brash assertion that she needed to transition to a male. Failing to investigate Kara's mental health issues, the clinic advised the then teenage girl that she was indeed male and should undergo what she has since described as, quote, an experimental treatment. After only four superficial hour-long appointments, the clinic set Kara on a transitioning pathway that saw her receive puberty blockers age 16, testosterone shots age 17, and a double mastectomy aged 20. But after realising she wasn't a man and sick of being a medical experiment, Kara stopped taking testosterone and began detransitioning five years after the damaging process has started. Now, Kara sadly bears irreversible scars from her treatment, but she was brave enough to pursue a judicial review of the Tavistock and Portman NHS Trust to stop other kids repeating her mistake. The High Court initially found in favour of Kara's landmark case and NHS England immediately declared that under 16s would not receive blockers without a court order. Although that decision was overturned in September last year and she was denied an appeal. Despite that, there's no doubt that Kara's courageous fight has given the issue of puberty blockers the global prominence it deserves. Women's right champion J.K. Rowling had glowing praise for Kara and the huge significance she has undoubtedly had on the gender identity debate. The Harry Potter author tweeted Alison Bailey, Kara Bell and Sonia Appleby, one day books will be written looking back at the full impact gender identity ideology had on vulnerable youth, women's rights and freedom of speech here in the UK. And these women will rightly be seen as heroines. And I'm delighted to say that Kara joins me now. So, Kara, you must be heartened by the fact the government now seems to be taking this issue of puberty blockers, which you're so passionate about after what you experienced seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something we've all been kind of hoping for for a long time. Um, and, uh, yeah, fortunately, there's been enough uh, pushback uh, uh, for from from for all of this that um you know something things seem to be finally changing yeah and Kara what's so fascinating is when you actually look at the data and you look at a story like yours what seems to be happening but tell me if I'm wrong because you've lived through it but what seems to be happening is that uh lesbian women lesbian teenagers who are confused about their sexuality are almost being trapped into a uh, trans medical cycle. Is is that what you see going on? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it's it's all across the board. There are lesbian women, bisexual women, even straight women, and the same for men uh, and, and boys. Um, it's uh, it's a very complex issue because it's it's, uh, it's it's not just about sexuality. It's about uh, not fitting in and not not living yeah. up to society's expectations. So it's um, yeah, it's really it's a really complex situation that's uh, going to take a lot of work to to tackle at the root. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, for me personally, as a teenager, hormones all over the place, and actually, you just need to get through that period. I think to work out where you are. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it, it should be, that shouldn't even be a thing. Uh, you know, everyone knows that. Everyone knows that's the case. Um, children being put on this pathway, it's, it's, um, it's ridiculous, yeah. And tell me, Kara, how difficult life has been for you as a result of your treatment? Because, of course, the puberty blockers and the, the different hormone and testosterone treatment that you're on has had a massive impact on someone who wants to live life now as what you are, a, a, a woman. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I can never can never get that back. I mean, uh, my life's completely on a different path uh, and, and on a negative one um, in the sense that, uh, you know, I, uh, I won't be able to live out the things that I should have been able to live out and, and uh, the way I'm perceived and, and personal matters as well are all completely affected, yeah. Because, of course, one of the most difficult things about the treatment is that when you were very young, uh, you did consent to the fact that it might take away your ability to have children. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, none of this stuff has been tested uh, completely unaware of, of uh, the, the extent of the damage that has been caused. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I have no idea until until I get to that stage, I guess. Do you still feel angry about it, Kara? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I need to get to a stage where, and I feel like I am getting to that stage where um, I can kind of put it in in a box and kind of uh you know because i have to continue with with living my life and i can't um i can't stay on this this for you know and, and there's so many different aspects to my life that i'm i'm dealing with i mean that's just a very small one that unfortunately was inflated at, at a bad time so um yeah i'm just trying to trying to move forward yeah so what's your message to the health secretary uh, Sajid Javid, who does seem to be open to having this discussion. I mean, should anyone under 18, for example, be able to go on puberty blockers and, and go through these sorts of treatments at all? Or should you have to wait until you're 18? Um, I don't think that's really for, for me to say, because... Um, I- I can only speak from personal experience and I know what I was like under 18 and, and even even beyond that, uh, I, I didn't really, I don't think anyone can see how it's really going to affect you further down the line. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it is not really for me to say, but I, I, I don't think uh, for most kids it shouldn't be allowed, yeah. Because from your personal experience, Kara, it sounds like there wasn't enough investigation into what was going on with you psychologically you know you had a really difficult family circumstances at the time you were battling with your sexuality so presumably you think there should have been much more time spent to actually understand what you were living through and what you were going through rather than just putting you on this medical path yeah absolutely i mean i firmly believe that uh gender dysphoria is a symptom of 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 deeper things going on. Wow. Um, I mean, yeah, it's as, it's as simple as that, really. I mean, uh, there's no such thing as being born in the wrong body. Um, so, yeah, I, it's, it's quite shocking to me when I look back and none of the adults really uh, noticed that or, or cared. Well, I find it absolutely fascinating that that is your view because, obviously, we need to believe you, given you have lived through this. Uh how heartening has it been, Kara, to see the support of someone as high profile as J.K. Rowling, who we have to admit has made this discussion so prominent and international too? Absolutely. I mean, I, I respect her completely, um, not only uh, with with the fact that she's speaking out uh, as such a public figure about this particular heated topic, uh, but uh, creatively as well. And, uh, yeah, that was a very sweet message uh, from her. I mean, I, like I said, I just have tons of respect for her. I mean, it, it can't be easy, uh, despite the position that she's in. And, Kara, what would your advice be to the parent of a child now? Because, by the way, we see the numbers. I mean, the numbers are shooting up, shooting up. Uh, the number of... of teenage kids at the moment in Britain who are starting to go through the same process that that you went through. What would be your advice to a parent worried that their child, their teenager, might be able to make an irreversible decision that they will come to regret? I mean, I always struggle with these questions because I'm not a parent um, and it was something that my parents went through and 
I mean, I haven't even got to the bottom of kind of how they dealt with it, really. And that's not really been a big discussion. So, um, but I mean, I'm 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 on the sidelines, just like them, really, just waiting for uh, the, the bigger changes to happen to the point where kids aren't being harmed anymore. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, look, keep fighting the good fight, and I hope we stay in touch because. Uh, your story is phenomenal and it's incredibly brave uh, to speak out in the way that you are. I've wanted to talk to you for a long time, so I'm delighted we made it happen tonight. That's the activist. Thanks a lot. Bell. Thanks for having me. Uh, the Tavistock Trust uh, welcomed the decision to deny Kara a Supreme Court appeal on her case. They said... Our hardworking, caring and thoughtful colleagues in the Gender Identity Development Service and the patients they support will be relieved by the end of this period of uncertainty.